Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to practice adding positive and negative numbers without the aid of a calculator. Now, of course, most of you out there could do this problem with a calculator. We have uh, negative 0.75 plus 1 eighth. So again, this would be pretty easy with your calculator, but that's not the point of this video. What we want to do is practice our knowledge and understanding and our skills to add positive and negative numbers. And this is extra fun because we have a decimal here and a fraction. So there's a couple different approaches you could take to do this problem. Matter of fact, if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct uh, answer in just one second. Then we're going to walk through this problem step by step. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so again, negative 0.75 plus 1 eighth. Uh, there's not one approach to this problem, but if you got this right, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. You would have come up with one or two solutions. So hopefully most of you worked um, this problem in fractions. I think that's the easiest approach. And if you did, you would have gotten negative 5 eighths. Now, there is a decimal um, approach to this problem, and the decimal equivalent is negative 0.625. So either one of these answers is fully acceptable as a correct answer. And if you got this right, let's go ahead and celebrate by giving you a nice big happy face and A plus a 100%. And multiple stars, you can tell your friends and family that indeed you can add positive and negative numbers, decimals and fractions. You're an ace at arithmetic. They'll be extremely impressed with that information indeed. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, now, the first thing I want to say is that if you don't understand, or if you didn't get this right, a couple of uh, quick thoughts. First, you want to um, kind of really make sure you understand just basic fraction operations. Can you work with fractions? Do you have a basic understanding of decimals? Do you have a basic understanding of positive and negative numbers? Because if you don't, then this particular problem is going to maybe be a little bit, you know, it's not the, the uh, best starting point if you're trying to learn these skills. Now, uh, just a quick uh, suggestion, if you are struggling with this, uh, even you know after this explanation, I have a great little mini course. Uh, it's called my Math Foundations course. I cover all the basics, everything you need to really kind of strengthen your math skills to handle more um, advanced math like algebra. So you can check that out. Also, I have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out with all this stuff as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. So here we go. We have negative 0.75 plus 1 eighth. Now, this isn't exactly how you have to think about this problem, but it's good to kind of, um, when you're dealing with positive and negative numbers, is try to estimate uh, or think about, is the answer going to be positive or negative, i.e., is the sum going to be positive or, uh, or negative, right? So we have a negative number plus a positive number, so we're going to end up with a positive answer or a negative answer. So it's worthwhile to kind of think about this. Uh, now, it may not be... Um, quite obvious to you that you're like, oh, this is going to be negative, this is going to be positive, but you should put a little thought into it. It's a good habit because when you uh, do this work, your answer, you should kind of, you know, reality check it the best you can. In other words, ask yourself, does the answer make sense? So how can we determine whether this is going to be positive or negative? Well, effectively, what we have to do is compare these values, right? You have to have some number sense. Now, again, this isn't um, uh, part of the absolute procedure to add these two uh, numbers, but I'm just kind of uh, take a little bit of time to kind of go down uh, this path and then we'll get into actually calculating the sums. So one thing that you want to do is you need to have uh, the ability to uh, compare two numbers, all right? So here we have a decimal, here we have a fraction, but you still need to be able to have some sort of way to compare two values to determine which is bigger, which is larger, right? So here I have a positive number. Here I have a negative number. The answer, you know, uh, you know, it really depends on which one of these absolute value um, 
uh, num which uh, number has the greatest absolute value. In other words, if we take away the negative signs, which is the greater number. So we want to kind of um, think about it in this way. There's a couple different approaches. Now, one eighth we can think of as a decimal point uh, one two five. Now, uh, how did how did I get that? Well, some of you may know that one eighth is equal to the decimal point one two five, but to convert a fraction to a decimal, you got to take the numerator one and divide it by eight. That's kind of a lot of calculations, uh, a lot a lot of work to do without the aid of a calculator. Now, I'm not saying that you can't do it, but probably most of you out there um, probably forgot that this is. In fact, uh, the conversion, right? The one eighth is equal to 0.125. Again, we're trying to do this problem without the aid of a calculator. However, most of you, I think, would be um, okay with uh, looking at the decimal 0.75. Let's just forget the negative sign here for a second. That the decimal 0.75 is equivalent to the fraction three fourths. Okay, so this is probably the easiest way to convert. And what we want to do is convert uh, or uh, compare these two numbers either as two decimals or two fractions. So we already have one eighth. So uh, 0.75 we can write as the fraction three fourths. So hopefully most of you know that. If you don't know that, this is definitely one of these decimal to fraction equivalents like 0.25 is one fourth. Uh, 0.5 is of course one half. These are real basic uh, you know, decimal and fraction equivalents that everyone should know. Okay, so we have negative 0.75, so that's equal to the fraction 3, 4. So I'm going to suggest that you work in fractions. This is uh, by far the easiest way to do this problem. And again, uh, you know, we're just thinking about comparing these two numbers for a second, right? So the qu this question, for example, I could um, have just, you know, restated this question. Instead of adding these, I could say, which is the larger number and justify your conclusion. So that could be a kind of different flavor of question. But here we have one eighth and now we have negative three fourths. So how do we compare these numbers? Well, you can't compare these yet because we don't have the same denominators, right? So what we're gonna wanna do is uh, have these fractions written in such a way uh, that they have the same denominator. Now, of course, it would be beneficial to have the lowest common denominator, but it's not uh, absolutely necessary uh, to make a comparison. But here I have a denominator of eight. Here I have a denominator of four. How can I make these the same? Easy, we'll just change this four into an eight by multiplying both the denominator by two and the numerator uh, by two. So negative three fourths is equivalent to the fraction negative six over eight. And of course we have one eighth. And here, hopefully you could see that this value here, the absolute value is, is greater, right? So in other words, our answer is going to end up being negative. Now that still may be confusing to some of you um, here, but let's kind of look at a number line. All right. So here is negative 0.75. This would be one right here, right? So negative 0.75 would be like way over here. So if this was one negative, negative one, actually, excuse me, that would be negative 0.75. And then here we have one eighth, positive one eighth. That would be like 0.125. So this is a smaller value. Okay. Think of it this conceptually smaller positive value than where this is going in the negative direction. So one way to, you could think of adding positive and negative numbers, this is kind of a model that's used in a lot of textbooks, I think it's a pretty good model, is the following. You could start here at negative 0.75 and we're going to add a positive uh, 0.125, okay? So what you do from here is you add this 0.125 uh, to this negative 0.75 and right here will be the location of the answer, the sum. Okay, now of course we're going to calculate that, but the, what I'm trying to get you to uh, do here is just to understand, you know, um, estimate if this answer is going to be positive or negative. So hopefully you see that it is negative. Again, this is an app. It's not a requirement to do this problem, but you should always be thinking in uh, in this in these terms, right? When you're comparing two different numbers, you know, positive, negative uh, values. Be thinking about hmm, which one is greater, which one's smaller, where is the answer going to end up at? It's just to help uh, a good uh, practice in uh, what we call number sense. You want to have a good sense of numbers and their values. 
Okay, so now let's go ahead and get into the actual problem. So as I suggested, the, the easiest way to do this problem is to work with fractions. Okay, so here we have negative 0.75. We talked about how that is equivalent to the fraction negative 3 fourths, and we're going to be adding it to this fraction 1 eighth. So this just becomes a simple fraction problem. So the first thing we need to do uh, before we add or subtract fractions, the denominators must be the, uh, the same. So we have to find the LCD, the lowest common denominator. And here the LCD is equal to 8. Now, again, if you don't know how to find the LCD here, this is a very easy problem. This is a topic, a full, complete lesson uh, in and of itself. Okay, So if you are struggling with fractions, okay, make note of that and just fix these problems now. I have a ton of videos, again, on my YouTube channel, or just check out my Math Foundations course because I teach all of this stuff kind of encapsulated in one little mini course. Okay, so the LCD is 8, meaning that we want to rewrite these fractions such that their denominator is 8. This already has a denominator of 8. Here, this is a denominator of 4, so we have to fix this up. And I already kind of showed you how uh, to do that, but we'll review this here. So this uh, fraction's denominator is 4. We want to write it as 8. How can I change a 4 into an 8? Easy, just multiply it by 2. So 2 times 4 is, in fact, 8. But if I multiply the denominator by 2, I must multiply the numerator by 2 to keep everything consistent. So uh, 2 times negative 3 will give me a negative 6. So a negative 3 fourths turns into an equivalent fraction of negative 6 eighths. But the deal here, why we want to um, you know, uh, work with negative 6 eighths, is because we have the same denominators now. So we have negative 6 8 plus 1 8. This is the equivalent problem to doing negative 3 fourths plus 1 eighth. Okay, so now this is going to be super easy to add fractions that have the same denominators. All we need to do is add the respective numerators. So here we have negative 6 and 1. So we're just going to add this um, in our numerator. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. So our final answer is negative 5 eighths. Okay, now if you know you were so inclined, you could take 5 and divide it by 8. That would be a good amount of work to do by hand, and you'll see that you'll end up with a decimal uh, 0.625, and of course this would be uh, negative. So this is the uh, decimal equivalent of negative 5 eighths. So this is uh, what I'm going to suggest is the best and easiest approach um, you know, uh, to work with fractions versus decimals, but maybe some of you did this using decimals. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. So to work with decimals, what we're going to have to do is keep our original problem. Uh, we'll keep the negative 0.75. Of course, that is a decimal. And then here, we would, we're going to have to convert 1 eighth to the decimal 0.125. Now, if you didn't know that, that is a fairly common fraction decimal equivalent. But uh, most of you probably forgot that. Again, we're not using our calculator. So we'd have to take 1 and divide it by 8, do all this uh, calculation. So you have to be good with working with decimals and division, et cetera. And you'll see that 1 eighth is the, uh, the decimal uh, 0.125. So we'll have this right here. So now our um, new question is a negative 0.75 plus 0.125. OK, so what do we have to do here? Well, again, you're going to have to have a sense of which is the larger value. In other words, if I have negative 6 plus uh, 5, what is the answer? Right? Let me write this right here. Well, the answer is going to be a negative 1 because this 6 has a larger absolute value. Right? Uh, this negative 6 is a larger. In other words, absolute value is when you go like this and uh, you're just looking at the positive version of this number, okay? So negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. The answer is negative because this has a larger absolute value. But let's kind of reverse it like this and make the, uh, the question 6 plus negative 5. Well, what has uh, the larger absolute value? The 6 does, but now its sign is positive, right? So our answer is going to be a positive 1. Okay, so we'll do this one time, last time for those of you that... Uh, still might be confused. So negative 6 plus 5, the answer is going to be negative because this number, okay, we're looking at the uh, the value with the largest absolute value. Now, I like to kind of teach uh, adding positive and negative numbers in a separate way. But again, if you're confused with this, then this video might be a, you know, a little bit 
you know, I would say too advanced, but it's not a good starting point. Start with easier numbers and kind of work your skills up. Okay, but hopefully you understand that here we have a uh, larger, okay, uh, that 0.75 is larger. Its absolute value is larger, so our answer is going to be negative. All right, so what we need to do is subtract these two decimals, okay? So for the time being, we're just going to take our 0.75 and subtract away 0.125. We're going to do this nice, lovely decimal subtraction. So just recall your uh, fourth and fifth grade years, how you used to do this. Again, we're not uh, using a calculator. So you can see here, oh, oh, I'm trying to take five away from zero. can't do that, so I'm going to carry one over so but i'm just kind of doing this you know as i remember way back from like maybe 1976 who knows it was a long time ago but i had great teachers because i could still do what they taught me even back all those years okay so you can see here i'm just doing basic uh subtraction decimal subtraction you end up with 0.625 right so that is the difference however I got to keep my sign in mind, right? It's the final answer is negative. So I got to put a negative sign in front of that 0.625. So this to me is uh, much more, um, I don't want to say cumbersome, but it requires a lot more steps and probably much more confusing. However, if you took this route without the aid of a calculator, that is awesome as well. But here's the bottom line with this. Uh, you know, when you are in uh, courses like algebra and beyond, you know, you look at arithmetic and you're, you get so used to using your calculator that you forget these skills, right? These skills, working with um, decimals, working with fractions are critical to your success in more advanced math. And if you don't practice them, you're going to lose them. So again, if you need help with this, check out like my Math Foundations course. I do have a lot of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But if this particular video helped you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.